Hey guys, it's Robin Nicole, the inspiration specialist, and I'm wired to inspire you to live your authentic purpose. Thank you so much for listening to my YouTube channel today, y'all. I'm so excited because this is not something that happens to me a whole lot. Now, I'm going to be very transparent. Usually, if I get some type of vision, it's usually specifically for people that I know. I don't know why God does it like that, but I don't know. I guess the older I get, I think it's he gives me that to protect them or to help them or to warn them, right? I don't always get like, you know, public visions. I'll, I'll get something prophetically. And if you follow my page at all, you will know that. Um, you also know I'm just not out here wild, just saying and doing anything that pops up because, again, I don't get down like that. So when I do have the type of experience that I had this morning and I'm supposed to just put it out there for many people to get, got me really excited because that normally does not happen like that for me, especially with the vision. I don't get visions that often. Okay. But when I do, uh, sometimes it will come in the form of not just a vision that, that God shows me that I see, but I might see it in a dream too. Right. So, um, another thing too, I would like to say, so I get no joy. I get no personal pleasure out of telling anybody anything that I see that could cause discord or make them feel uncomfortable. I'm not even that type of person. I'm not even that type of human. But what I'm learning is that when God gives you a spiritual gift and you begin to ask him to help you to understand why you have it and you realize it's really, really for a good reason, even if it doesn't appear that way, you'll understand that, you know, I think many people who have these types of giftings and our hearts are in the right place, we literally just say what we need to say because we want to protect those we love and care about. And I don't know why I felt like I needed to say that, but I have been in experiences where I've been villainized for things like that. And it's very crushing. Like it, it, it can make you not want to genuinely be obedient and share the things that God wants you to say because it, be, it begins to make you feel a way. There's another person that I realized I never would see this person, right? Um, and when I would see them, I would have something to say and it would never be something that God would want me to text them or call them or send a voice note or anything like that. But I would, I might see them every few years. It's the oddest thing. And then someone had mentioned to me something that they said about me regarding that. And it really hurt my feelings because I'm like, man, I don't think people understand that when you have a calling to give people words and you just, you just not out here in these YouTube streets or with your friends and with different people, just out here giving people stuff for kicks and giggles or trying to get money or doing whatever some people do. It is a very crushing feeling when you know your heart is pure and you really just want to do what God wants you to do because you don't want that blood on your hands. You literally do not want that. And to be villainized and to be talked about as if you just making stuff up or you just trying to say whatever, that is hard. And I just think for people who don't really understand what this is like, it's important for me to give that disclaimer because you don't know heavy is the crown and it's not always a choice people make. Okay. Especially when you see things or God shows you things and warnings. First of all, it's two layers. Some things you can't even say. Okay. Everything is not meant for you to say. It's just meant for you to pray. And then other things you have to say, and it sucks. Okay. Like it sucks. You don't even want to tell people stuff like that, but again, you the villain. So again, I'm not making those who intercept these things or have give things into a victim either, but I'm just trying to be, uh, I'm trying to maturely express to you how this is a very serious thing. And I've said multiple times on my channel, stop listening to all these people who throwing out these prophetic words, these wishes, these, these fantasies and, and feeding on whatever the vibe is right now, whatever the buzzword, everybody wanted this type of thing. They're waiting for this type of person. Like you got to be careful with that because there are a lot of people who can see that you have itching ears. It's like smelling, you know, they smell blood. A predator smells blood. You know what I'm saying? So they, they, they see it, right? And they, they're like, okay, well, let me just give them more. Let me feed the beast. When really, this is not something 
to be played with. You don't just be out here doing that. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know. Again, I just felt like I needed to say that before I said this vision that I saw in this word, because it's really, really awesome. Please make sure you go listen to my short. It's only 60 seconds. I posted that just a few minutes ago before I posted this whole word, but this got me excited. So check it out. So I saw a vision of a pack of people and it was a pack of people. They were in the back and then they were moving to the front of the stage. Right. There was like, it was odd because it was just like a back. They were in the back of some place, but to be honest, it didn't look like they were at the back of a stage. It looked like they were just in the back, like just in the back somewhere. Like it could have been the back of a building, a house. I don't know, but they were in the back. Then all of a sudden when they moved up and they got pushed up to the front, they were on a stage. So this is important for me to break this down like this, because I want you to really understand what God is trying to say right here. Okay. Once, excuse me, once they got into a position and they were in the front of the stage, going from the back of God knows where to the front of the stage, right then and there is when I saw, um, the words 20 years. And then I saw later years. It was like, it was like kind of like, not like a scrolling marquee or like a flashing thing, but it was just like words that I saw, like just kind of coming at me once they went up to the front. Now, let me explain to you what this means. So what God was showing me that 20 years, right? 20 years, 20 years. There's some people specifically within the last 20 years of your life, you were trying to endeavor something. Okay. You were trying to endeavor whatever your career was, whatever, whatever it was. You might've been in the music industry. You might've been trying to be, uh, you know, uh, create a brand. I don't know, start a clothing line. I don't know. It could be anything. You would know specifically who this is for, but y'all, when God showed me 20 years, I knew he was being very specific to somebody right now who went from pursuing this thing really, really hard to going all the way just to the back. Okay. Now let me break down that back to the front of the stage thing. The fact that they were not at the back of a stage, but when they were pulled out from the back, they ended up on the front of a stage. It lets me know that they had gotten so far away from pursuing the thing they really felt God gave to them because for whatever reason, they thought they were not good enough. They weren't successful. They didn't know how to, you know, turn it into a career. I don't know what it is, but the fact that they were just in the back, it just let, it let me know God, it just, he's really confirmed in my spirit that, you know, you got to the point where it was like, you know what? I just, I just don't even want to be involved. So let's just say you were a person trying to be an actor. You're a person who were trying to get on, right? And you were trying to, you know, all this time to make it work with your acting and your career. And then you go all the way to the back. Because you're like, you know what? I don't even want to be in the auditorium anymore. I don't even want to be in the theater anymore. I don't even want to be here. Like you just literally left the building completely. So when I saw people in the back, the back represented just literally not even being a part of the field anymore, right? Like you're not even, if you were somebody trying to do acting, you to some of y'all that got to the point where you don't even watch TV like you used to. You've completely disconnected. You don't even want to be bothered. You know what I'm saying? And so you're literally in something else. Some of you stopped and completely got in a different com com uh, profession. Like you might've went from wanting to be an actor and now you teach math or something. And it's something that's, that you weren't even called to do. You don't even like to do it, right? There's millions of people that like to teach math, but you might not be one of them, but you felt like, you know what? It pays the bills. I have not been successful at this, so I do not want to continue, right? So there was that group. Another group of people, the back was representing that they allowed other people to flourish in that same field and they just kind of got quiet and hung out in the back. They just kind of chilled, right? Like, you know what? I'm gonna just let all these other people do it. But you know, deep down in your heart, that is not what God wants for you. You know that. And what, well, let me tell y'all why you got to be careful. When the enemy knows how great you can be in something, if, if, if he knows God is calling you to that thing, but your attitude not right or your mind is not right, then he is going to make you believe that the lessons that you're learning were just for you to do something else. 
and it wasn't for you to do the thing that God intended. But the reason why God did not let you soar in that season was because he knew you would mishandle it if you got there. So what the enemy has done in this time, he done brought you in the back. Not only did he put you physically in the back and he got you watching other people do the same thing, but he put that thing all the way in the very back of your mind to the point where you've, be you've made yourself believe that this is not the thing that God wanted for me, but I can help other people do it. Now, let me tell you something. It is always good to take the wisdom and become a mentor or to share your information. But hear me out. Some of y'all, that is not what God is saying. God is saying to you, hey, I let you, I let you go ahead and think that for a minute, but I'm putting you in the front. You belong in the front. And I'll tell you what's happening with some of these situations too. When the people went up to the stage, right? When they got up to the front of the stage, one thing I did see was a light. Okay. The light was not necessarily glaring on like each person's face, but the light was just present. So basically it was a bunch of incredible talent and there was a light being shined on that group of talent. Okay. So here's why if this resonates with you or if you're like, man, this is a word for my cousin. This is a word for my sister, my brother, my friend, my uncle, my daddy, my mama. They got to hear this because they thought they thought when such and such went wrong, then they're not supposed to do it. Right. Let me tell you what this means. Some of you are in the ballpark of what God showed you, but it's kind of like you're, you're like the, like the, uh, the, ch uh, the chain is off the track, right? Or like, you know, like when you ride a bike and the chain comes off and the, and the thing just starts spinning, you're on the bike, there's wheels, but you, the chain is off. So now the bike is not moving properly. That's what some of you are experiencing. So what I mean by that is this. So let's say, you are endeavoring something that's not the same, but you're trying to implement. You're trying to implement things from what you learned in the past, right? What you learned in the past about the profession that you've abandoned. You've, you're trying to implement that in some things that you're doing now. Let me tell you something. There are, there are people who are really struggling because God don't want them doing that. And what you have to be careful is with the enemy. This is, listen, he, he will try to literally make you do things with the appearance of success, but you are literally crumbling because you could barely keep it together. Let me just say something to you. I don't care how good an idea is. I'm a living witness. I am idea shorty. You heard me like the Lord has given me so many ideas. Thank you, Jesus. I have my right mind. I have all types of things that I've endeavored that I've approached things that I've like, Oh yeah, totally. I'll do this. I got this. And it ended up not being successful. It wasn't because the idea sucked or the branding was bad. It was just like all of the cylinders were hitting. But what I didn't realize was I kept trying to create other avenues and trying to do other things that were contrary to what God showed me. Because for one, I was hurt because it didn't work the way I thought. Number two, I was around too many people making me believe that, hey, maybe it's supposed to be something else. And number three, when he did have those people around me that would that would gently say, girl, look, you still going to make it in this area. I would snap on them. I didn't even want to hear them because I was so hurt right? From what happened before. So what I found myself doing was creating opportunities and other things to help other people in that area. But God kept trying to show me, no, 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 no. You're still supposed to be doing that. And that's the part about, Hey, you know, if your attitude not right, if you, you stank with it, you ain't doing what you need to do, you know, it'll turn into all these other things. And this is why I'm so serious. If you are hearing me, please, please, if you don't do nothing else, I just have one favor, just one favor. Please just ask God. It does not have to be this eloquent 10 minute prayer. It could be just a couple of words. Ask in your way, but just say, God, Lord, if this applies to me, if this applies to me, y'all got chills. Oh my God, Jesus Christ. I got some chills. Woo! Just went up my arm, y'all. This is such a beautiful message for somebody who has been hurting for so long. My God. And somebody who just dropped the ball or trying to pass the ball when God is trying to give you the entire thing. Ask the Lord if this word is for me. Because this is an in-season word, by the way, which means that I don't know how long the season is going to last, but it's happening within this time. You ask the Lord, hey, listen, if this is a word for me in this season, please not only 
confirm it specifically with something that only I would know. It doesn't have to be something general that everybody will make sense to everybody else, but, but, but put your special touch on it based on the relationship that we have personally. Put your special touch on it. So I know if I see the yellow butterfly, I know that's you. I know if I see the, the, the three red cars, I know it's you. Because y'all, the beautiful thing about having your own relationship with the Lord, which is what I, I encourage all the time, is that you have your own language with the Lord. You speak to the Lord in your own way. You know what I'm saying? So you do not have to deal with trying to figure out someone else's way in their messaging because you have your own messaging with the Lord and you know, when he shows up in these particular ways, you know what that means. I know y'all for some of y'all when certain people show up in your life, when certain people say things to you, when certain people connect to you, you know, God sent them, whether you mad with them or not, whether you love them being around or not, you know what that person represents It's no different. Right? Is is if you know that when God does certain messaging directly to you, that that is Him saying, "I'm putting my check of I'm putting my check of approval on it. This is what I want for you, daughter. This is what I want for you, son." So this is extremely important to remember right up in this space. Okay. Another thing too. So I want to break down to y'all what the twenty years and the and, and the later years mean. Okay. So the twenty years I knew because I saw two zero. It was specifically, there was something very specific for people who have been trying to pursue something in the last 20 years. And even though, thank you, Holy Spirit, some of you have seen success, but it's not the success you know that you're supposed to get from it. I'm going to let the Lord speak to you directly for that. And then I, you know, we'll go on from that, but you know that there's more again, trying to pour it into other people to do it is great, but it's not going to matter if it's what you're supposed to be doing. It don't matter. You can run from it. And I'll tell you what else, what God is going to start to do for some of you in this season. Now this is heavy. So please take it, take it with, please take it light. It's a heavy word. So when I drop it, take what I mean by take it light, take it with a light heart. Like don't, don't feel like don't get, don't let it incite fear because the Lord does not incite fear. The Lord does not incite condemnation. He does not incite you to be frantic. He comes to give revelation and reveal. Holy Spirit comes to comfort you. If you feel anything, if you feel some conviction, like, man, God told me not to do that. Man, I shouldn't have did that. That's why I don't have no more money. Or dang, God told me I should have went did that. I just went and gave it to such and such because I was upset and I didn't want to be bothered. That's conviction. Now, some of you might feel that. If you feel any kind of condemnation, you're going to need to check out because that's not how we rocking with this. This is a beautiful word, but the Lord is going to have to give some more information so that you can get the full meaning of what's happening right now. Okay. You have to be able to do it because it's happening in this season. And when I say this season, some of you are going to know today that there's a difference. Others of you, this season might last the whole 2022. It might be the next three years. I don't know, but I know that right now in January, 2022, there's some movement happening. Some of you might hear this in August, 2027. That means that that is the season for you to experience it. Okay. So hear me out. Some of you are going to realize that your attempts to help other people to do the same thing or to maybe, you know, try to just disconnect yourself completely in that capacity, that stuff is going to start backfiring because the jig is up. It is your season. The harvest is ready. He's going to open up the doors for you to do it your way. You're not going to have to present yourself in a way where it's, it's less than, Ooh, thank you, Lord. Some of y'all are going to be reset. Some of y'all started out in these things. And you didn't skip steps. Some of you started and you had really high morals. You had really great focus. But the industry, whatever your industry is, if it's the, the food industry, the teaching ministry, if it's administration, if it's, if it's leadership, if it's education, if it's music, if it's the arts, if it's acting, if it's all, you know, whatever it is, y'all. Some of you, you have, you've changed, you started out saying, man, I'm never going to do stuff like this. And then you just started doing that kind of stuff because you got hurt. You feel messed over. Some of you guys are great cooks. And then when you saw these other people just 
you know, they post something online and stuff go viral. They food is terrible. You over here, you over here, they spending $20. You spending $200 because you want the right ingredients and you want things to be whatever. But here you are, you don't went started getting all of the stuff they get because you got frustrated. It's enough of that. We're not doing that. You're going to have to get, you're going to have to accept that what you believed and what the enemy made you believe was a false narrative these within these last 20 years that it, it it's not for you lies and garbage baby lies and i cannot wait when i tell y'all i'm i wish y'all could see me i probably should have recorded this with my face so you could see how much my arms are just is chills and like chill bumps and for me that's always a sign the holy spirit is confirming and in the building with me but this is what makes me so excited because there's nothing like Knowing that you've been rejected about something and told that you're not good enough for something and you, you, oh, well, well, you can do this good, but you can't do that good. But you know, God showed you that you could do it good. That's a horrible feeling, especially when a person that's telling you that appears to be at that time in a position of power. That is crushing because you know that that person can call the shots, but you sitting there looking like a subordinate or somebody that's like less than you got your head down. Like, well, man, I guess they're right. And you go away with your tail between your legs. Enough already. First of all, you're going to be vindicated. Second of all, you need to make sure you don't have no nasty attitude with them and you don't, you don't get crazy with them because guess what? They're going to be humbled. But it is not your job to bask in it. I can tell you right now, if this word is for any of you and those people that's going to have to say they sorry or they're going to have to reopen that door for you, the, if you have one ounce, there go those chills again, if you have one ounce of ugliness, foulness, unforgiveness, if you stank, like they say in New Orleans, <laughs> you got old stank attitude, if you got old crazy uh, demeanor and posture, baby, God going to shut that thing right down. Right? Let me tell you. You better get your mind right. You better get your mind right. This blessing is going to come through for people that are ready. Now, let me be very clear before I wrap this up. See, there's seed time and harvest. So some of y'all just literally going in through a harvest because you planted so many seeds. Now, I will tell you, some of you planted seeds in some things that did not honor God at all. So something that you're trying to do right now is just going to slip through your fingers. And what you need to do is not fight it. You need to not take it as a loss and you need to not take it as an L, but you also need to understand conviction and you do have to understand myself included. I've had my own personal endeavors with this y'all. So I'm not speaking from a place of, of, of not, uh, experiencing these things. Now I'm getting on the other side, but please be clear when I tell you some of the seeds that you started to plant got mixed up in the seeds of the blessings that were honorable by God. So God is going to separate the wheat from the tares. So that means that some of the stuff you've planted seeds in since then, since you've abandoned this stuff, that stuff is not going to work. And you should not be upset about that. That's not being damning. That is not word cursing you. That is just letting you know, if you want the things of God, the things of God will last. Listen, the blessing of the Lord excuse me, I think it gives wealth and adds no sorrow. I want to make sure I'm saying that correctly, but that is your sign for some of y'all because you are in sorrow. You are in sorrow for something you keep saying God gave to you. And honey, that don't line up with the word of God. Okay. It just doesn't work. It just doesn't line up. So I want you guys to understand. In, in fact, it's Proverbs 10, 22, the blessings of the Lord make it rich, rich and he added no sorrow with it. So basically what he's saying is when the Lord is going to make you rich, he's going to make you wealthy. There's not going to be any sorrow. That doesn't mean that you're not going to have any tribulations or things that you go through. But some of you have left the thing that God originally called you to do and put you in this earth to do. And now you're doing all of these other things. Again, some of y'all are in, in professions as, as, a, as a teacher or working at a store and there are people that God has called to be teachers and to work in retail. Yes, God calls people to work in retail, okay? Yes, he does, because you don't know how God could use people. So let me just be clear about that. God calls people to do things in different seasons. He purposed them to do things the way he wants them to do because he has an agenda to, to, to incite service and for us to help other people. But you see, when you're just trying to mismatch and put people in places to do this and do that because you didn't like how your story went or you got hurt and you abandoned it. First of all, you're going to start ruining relationships. 
Not only that, you're going to ruin your own sense of self in terms of what you know God put in your heart because you felt so defeated and you felt so played. Okay. So for those of you who are struggling and you're doing these other things, you know, a, a lot of y'all stuck in this place too, because the thing that you know, God called you to do, like, let's say God called you to be a cook. He called you to be a chef, right? And you was like chef in big time, like you big time chef in, right? Excellent, delicious, mwah, scrumptious food. But now, but now you play piano. And now you got all these people around like, man, you was a cook, but man, you ain't even better piano player, man. Oh, you so good, girl. You, girl, you on them keys, girl. You like leash keys, girl. Okay, but here's the problem with that. That don't matter. See, the reason why this word is so important because some of you are going to have to detach from things that people are telling you you're doing great at. Baby, the devil don't want you to get this bag. He don't want you to get no heavenly bag. That's not what he wants. He wants you to focus on the bag that you control. Come on. I'm about to, I'm about to bust this thing up. He wants you to focus on the bag that you can control. He wants you to focus on the bag that's connected to you looking good and you getting accolades. God trying to give you that heavenly bag, honey. The heavenly bag, can't nobody take it. And guess what? The heavenly bag, it make you rich and it add no sorrow. If you're not getting rich, listen, hear me out. Take, examine your life right now and examine what's happening. Y'all, when I did this, it changed me. Okay. I'm telling y'all, I'm not on no pedestal here. I'm telling you what I went through myself. If it ain't making you rich and it's adding sorrow, that's not God. I don't care how cute it is. I had to literally look at something y'all that I've been working on for years within me, not doing the thing that I know God called me to do because I was so broken hearted about how it just kept not working out for me. And guess what? I started getting accolades. I started being put in front of people and all of this, but y'all God did something in 2021 and 2022. And I'm like, Oh my God. Like he done went to the point where he blocked it. He it's to the point where I have been doing this thing for over a decade. And God was like, yeah, no, girl, I told you no. And all this time, I'm like, nah, because people were like, oh, my God, Robin, girl, you did that. Ooh, 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 girl, you got more coming. I did have more coming until God was like, okay, so here's what's going to have to happen. I'm going to completely shut this down now because you've written this. You, you've been, excuse me, you've been riding this wave for far too long. And you have let other people tell you that you've done so great at it and you're so good at it. You've let all of these people tell you this for so long that now you believe it. And the fact that you're trying to pursue it and hold on for dear life and it's crumbling and you can't keep it together. You still keep trying to put my name on it. You can't, you can stop putting my name on that, Robin. Okay. I didn't tell you to do that. Okay. I didn't tell you to do that, but it's getting me accolades and people are like, wow, this is great. So proud of you. And I'm over there like, okay, wait, Lord, something is not right. But the world didn't know something wasn't right, but I knew something wasn't right. Okay. So with that being said, the 20 years specifically was for people within that. But then I told you, I saw later years. So this was the part that let me know that there are people who are, you know, is not, this is not a, this is not a word for 20 somethings, you know, unless you 30 and you started something when you were five and you've been doing this since you were a kid, it would apply. But this is not for people who have not been focused on something less than 20 years. So I want to be very clear about that. Okay. And when I saw later years, it was God showing me y'all, they got some of y'all, your mama, your grandma, your daddy, you got some uncles, aunts, you got some people that are older than you. You are about to see them blow up. They got people in their sixties, say seventies, Lord have mercy. 50 years old, you got some older siblings, you got some friends, you got some cousins. That's why some of y'all who are really young listening to this, or maybe you might be 40, but you really didn't get into nothing yet. You might just be getting into what you think you're called to do, right? Some of you need to pass this word on to them because a lot of them are going to be coming into their own. And I don't know why God waited for a pandemic. I don't know why he waited to drop this in 2022, early 2022, first quarter. I don't know why this is what he did, but guess what? It doesn't matter. Now, the people who you know, like you, some of y'all right now, you didn't, you didn't been on the phone this week with a family member, a friend and said, man, I wish my mama, you know, I just wish people could taste her cooking, man. Oh, she's so dope, man. 
My mama been so through so much. My grandma been through so much. I just wish I could get her on one of these magazines or help her go viral so people could see what she doing. You know, uh, some of y'all are saying, man, this girl been my best friend, you know, since I was a little girl. She worked so hard, man. I just I just really want her to start to shine. We were little kids and she was doing this. We 40 now. And, and still, man, it is not going for her. All of those people, those people, disclaimer, who are ready maturely, they're not going to have no nastiness, no unforgiveness. Those people who receive that, maybe some of the things they've picked up and endeavored while waiting God, waiting on God to blow this thing up, have to go. That's a big one. A lot of people are not going to receive this and they're going to miss it because they're not willing to let go of this other thing. But that's between them and God. I'm just going to say what I need to say on that and you can decide. But let me tell you this. The thing that almost brought me to tears with this whole vision was the reward. <laughs> Some of you, when you walk into this, you have planted so many seeds. No, y'all, I'm like, I'm, I'm full of tears because I'm like that full of joy and happy for people. Like, this is crazy. I don't know if y'all know the statement, hit a lick. That's like a little street thing, I guess. I, I've seen that on movies. I've heard people you know, say that as like a slang and stuff. So... I know what it means, but hitting a lick is like when boom, like you just come into like a whole bunch of money. Like you just, you like, boom, I hit a lick. That's what it's going to be like for a lot of you. And so God just wants me to tell you not to be afraid and do not get scared. And what I mean by that is this, like, don't get, don't get scared thinking about that because you're not, you kind of been in a place where maybe you haven't been broke, but you have gotten comfortable with whatever else you've been doing. So you just kind of say, well, you know what, um, you know, I'll never make all of this and that, but you know, I'm fine. It's going to be a bit jarring for some of you. So, so let me just give you three things, three practical steps that are going along with this prophetic word. Number one, many of you are going to hit a tax bracket you've never been in. So consult a financial person. Do not call the person who do your ain't and them taxes. Do not call your boy because they know how to put it together. Call a professional. If you are in entertainment, call an entertainment tax attorney or call someone who specifically does it. This is not that anymore. Okay. And the reason why a lot of y'all are going to literally walk through this successfully and the enemy is going to want you to be confused and he's going to want you to stay comfortable. So once the money comes, get an attorney, get a tax person, even if it means you have to just call them and get questions and answers, not because who you've been using or who your family know or, or, or you doing them yourself. There you go. For some of y'all, you do it yourself. It's not that it's not adequate or it's bad. But there are things that they don't know. It's simply for that. It's nothing else attached to it other than they just don't know. Okay? So you need to connect with somebody in wis with wisdom in your field. Some of you are into, um, some of you have been like messing around with computers for the last 20 years and trying to get into tech. You have done some tech things here and there. And there's just some laws, some legality, some money things, some tax things. You just need to understand what you're dealing with. So that's what it's about for that. Number two. Some of you are going to have to go back to the people you can, I need, and some of y'all, this is going to cause some thinking. You're going to have to sit and think about the people who, whenever you talk to them, they always talk to you about you doing this one thing and you have cut them off because you felt like you've grown and they keep bringing up old stuff. Right. You're going to have to get back with them people and call them back because they weren't wrong. And the reason why some of you got frustrated with them is because God made them be like that. God made them not deviate. God made them keep saying, no, you're going to be a great doctor. You're going to be a great educator. I know you've been teaching for 20 years. You've been trying to be the principal. You've been trying to do this. They've been keeping you down. But guess what? No, I know one day you're going to be a principal. And 20 years later, you're going to become the principal. It can be in any one of these fields, y'all. Okay. You call those people back and you make amends with them. You want to know why? Because they deserve to see you blossom and grow in this area because they believed it even when you didn't. All right. And the second thing, the last, excuse me, the third thing, the third and final thing as I wrap up for real, for real this time <laughs> is that you need to sit with yourself 
and forgive yourself and be okay with finally getting the thing you always knew God had for you. Now, you're like, why is that important? This is extremely important. Detrimental even if you don't do it. You want to know why? Because within 20 years, y'all, a lot can happen. You learn things, you grow from things, you, you, you have new perspectives on things. And some of you have gotten so comfortable with what you've believed and how you've been rocking and moving that you have set yourself, you've set a bar for yourself. You've set a, you set a mindset for yourself in this space that you don't realize that has be, it's become so comfortable that it might be hard for you to accept that this door is going to open and you're going to get paid your worth. Some of you even more so with bonuses and extras, and it's going to be hard to receive it. Some of you are going to think that the ball is dropping. You're going to just be looking from left to left, right. Like, hmm, I don't know about this. This is why this is very important. You want to know why? Because you are always who you are with. I've been telling y'all this for years. You are the one you've been waiting for. When it comes to romantic love and romance, when it comes, uh, I mean, in relationships, when it comes to career, personal, before you get another human in your life in that capacity, that's worth any salt, that's worth being with you and you worth being with them. Before you get any major opportunity. And again, these are based on God given things before you get anything you are the one you have been waiting for to come to the understanding that you need before you can receive it because you know you best so this is why it's important these words are going to either make or break some of you because it is imperative that you understand that this is your season you're turning your time and God is ready to do this for you you're going from the back of some of you the building back of your mind back into a corner all the way up to the front of the stage underneath the light. And you have to be okay with that. Some of you tried to be hair, hairstylist. Um, you tried to be fashion. You, you, you tried to be, um, a coach, you know, um, oh, this is interesting. It's like, God just kept showing me somebody who they kept trying to start like, uh, not construction, but kind of like, you know, cleaning the chim chimney, um, Fixing a pipe, like you kept trying to like start businesses like that, and you it just didn't it just didn't take off for you. But you always knew you were good with your hands. Well, you want to know what's gonna happen? God is gonna allow you an opportunity where you can do all those things, and you will get top dollar for it. This is an incredible, beautiful word, and I am so happy because many of you need it. Many of you need to share it with other people, and um, I want to say this too. God bless you, and I am really happy for you. And there are going to be some people who are going to be shocked because they know you and they don't know this about you. They don't even know that you do whatever this, this is that other people know you for, right? So there are going to be some people that have come into your life since you've abandoned this dream and gift that are going to have to go. Yeah, I said it. They're going to have to go because they don't belong. Some of them God allowed to come in for a season so that you can, you can, he can work some things out of you and mature you, but they have to go. There are other people that have been around the whole time and believe it or not, this is, again, this might be a hard pill to swallow for some, but some people that's been there since day one, they're going to have to go because what you didn't realize was God let them be there that whole time. But guess what? When the thing actually comes into your life, what they represented before, they'll represent the opposite. I know, I know some of y'all are like, dang, but you're going to know, you're going to know, you are going to know. There's some people that God let stay there the whole time, even when you fumbled with that thing and, you know, they've been kind of there, they, you know, just comfortable, just, you know, they just there. Let me tell you why. Some of y'all, they're going to feel like you owe them because they've been there with you. God don't want them people there. Because he put them there for that season. Some of them, they have to go because they're used to you not making it. That's going to hit home for somebody. They're used to you not making it. They done seen you quit it and drop it. So now they quote unquote seem super supportive regardless of what you do. But they kind of at peace because whatever came with the success or whatever came with the uh, the wealth or the opportunity or the traveling or whatever, whatever, whatever came with it. They knew it was going to keep drive a wedge between y'all two. They knew that it wasn't going to benefit them anymore. They'd rather be appear away 
And that's not really what it was. I'm telling y'all, when people give y'all prophetic words of everything, is everything going to be great and perfect? You better run. Because God wants to reveal things to us and bless us and help us. He does not want us to keep getting in these crazy situations and scenarios. And we are not equipped and we are not prepared. He does not want us to act like we're little babies. And we are not mature enough for him to give us the good, the bad, and the ugly. Because that's who God is. God always wants us to be um, in the best possible state for him. He knows that things are going to happen and you're not going to have a great day all the time. But this is why all the time y'all try to tell y'all, even when I know I feel like the world is crumbling, I have to have joy in my heart. I may not have joy in my mind at the time, or I might not be thinking about joy or feeling joyful, but if joy is in my heart, I could always get back at one. I could always get back to where I belong. So this is what's, this is what's very important. You sitting with this is, is deep because you're older now. You're not 20. You're not a teenager. You're not even 30 for some of you. So this is going to be a thing because for the majority of your life, maybe these people been around this person or, you know, again, there's some people who have literally taken on full careers because other people have bucked them up to do it. And that's not what God want them to do. You know, they might've been trying to be a corporate attorney, but their friend said, well, girl, you know, you're so nice with people, girl. You need to be a nurse, girl. You're going to be good at being a nurse, girl. You know, not saying, well, you could be a lawyer and a nurse because that's possible too. That's not impossible. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of this word is there's that heaviness I warned y'all about and you have to take it light because you're not supposed to go pulling out, taking a machete and cutting all your friends out your life. No, that's not what I'm saying. But, and not even just friends, but just some connections too, y'all. Now, this is not, you know what? Let me be clear. It ain't friends. It's just connections even. It's just people you know, circles you've been in. So understand me, there are gonna be some some major changes that comes with the actual fruit of this harvest but let me tell you this, you are going to finally be in the place that God wants you, wants you to be in with this gift and this anointing and this calling. And then you're going to be able to move for the rest of your life in the way that God intended. Not only will you see that it was all worth it, even when you thought it wasn't and you dropped it, you're going to see that even though you dropped it, it was yours and God had to put it back in your hands. And then you're also going to see that what he planned for you was never off the radar. He just have to he just had to deal with you off the radar before he put it back on there for you. So be encouraged. Please like, share, subscribe on wired to inspire.com. All things inspiration. That's the inspiration station. You can go to all of my links and see if it's something that you like. Make sure you cop one of my journals. Look at the comments and the description. All of the links and all types of other goodies are down there for you too. Remember, I have the I'm Wired to Inspire podcast, and that is on all podcasts, all major podcast uh, platforms. And um, y'all, I'm going to be redropping some of my shirts, my All It Takes Is One Move From God. Uh, I have journals with that already, and just some other cool things are coming. The coaching, the speaking engagements, the books, all of these things are coming, y'all. So I hope this blessed you. And uh, just remember, I'm Wired to Inspire. I hope you are too.